workshop. Have you ever been in a video before? Um, I think we did the fiber fairy. Oh, and the needle, the wet felted cloak. But I was just my hands. So. Oh. <laughs> No. I don't remember that. I'll have to go back and look. So this is Marsha, and she has been going hog wild. Uh, oh, I should have come up with pumpkin pun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the pumpkins and the locks, Marsha washes and dyes and keeps track of all of our locks and makes sure that we stay um, full of beautiful curly fiber. So um, I'm actually just here to keep her in check because we have like a bazillion ideas, mostly hers. Um, she just made all these pumpkins in the last two days. Th these are these are my pumpkins. <laughs> these are Marsha's pumpkins. Um, so, <laughs> um, so anyway, we are so excited because we have a lot to share with you um, to embellish the original pumpkin project, which Lee was here? Yes, yes it was here. Here. Okay, yeah, which we um, started with my friend Lee Charlton, and uh, Milo's not here today, but his little friend his Roscoe, Roscoe yes. is here uh, in his place, equally as frightening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we want to do is go over some of the additional things that you can do. We're going to show some products, and then we're going to go over the shoulder to some techniques um, we're going to show a curly Q stem on the tacky wrap um, sticks, the wire, and Marsha has this, um, well not stem, a curly Q kind of vine or tendril. Marsha has um, the twisted stem, which a lot of people have been asking about, and then there's a lot of information for um, coordinating locks, the bats, the core wool, the stem color, um, yeah. So I'm going to let you get started with okay. the things that you're raring to talk about. Well, so last year, um, you decided to come up with these bats, right? Yeah. So, so we have, they're all like, aren't they? I'm going to try to see if I can remember all their names. Okay. Harvest Moon. The orange one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost. Full Moon. Full Moon. <laughs> Halloween is all. Why did I Ghost? Um, oh my gosh, I don't Blue moon. Blue moon. <laughs> and that's the step. And this is vine for the vine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, they're, they are, they're so pretty. There's, we did a good job on Yeah, this. they're really, they're a lot of fun. It really yeah. brings in that fall feeling. And um, with the stem mm -hmm. colors too, um, you know, I use the vine, but I also, I either use one of the other pelts that we have, or I use a lot of the top coats and some merino to mix it mm -hmm. and card mm -hmm. for this darker brown stem. You, you could do anything, you know, just use up a lot of the supplies that you have and um, get more. So one of the things, <laughs> right, that's, my, <laughs> that's my philosophy, you need a little you bit know, of everything. I, I, olive would be really, olive's like one of my favorites. This is your favorite. Olive would be pretty too. Um, well, and so this year we decided that, you know, you have these pumpkin um, bats that you can use on your pumpkins, and if you were to buy the candy curls or some other natural curls, you're kind of limited to kind of guess what you get. It, it might be anything within like the reds or oranges. But um, we ended up going and dyeing some of these curls. So, and we dye them in the way that we do our fiber art bundles. So you get a lot of color mm -hmm. within, um, even within each, each lock. Yeah, so these are in the specialty lock section. Mm -hmm. And they have different names because there's there's four, four of them. And Marsha developed these color combos. And they all coordinate with not just the pumpkin bats, but we also, um, Jennifer made up this meteorite bat, the meteor mm -hmm. shower. Mm -hmm. It's part of the lit, lit, is it a landscape bat? Uh, it's in the specialty fibers okay. as well. It's okay. just another bat. So there's the one with the sparkle. No, it's in the house carton. It's in the house carton. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the snow white sparkle. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to make a white sparkly pumpkin, they're really fun to use too. And when you pick up your bat um, to use the color underneath, so if you were going to use the harvest, you would want to get like this orange, this is the pumpkin chunky mm -hmm. core to coordinate. That way you're using this, which costs less than this, um, you know, to bulk up your pumpkin. So you watch the pumpkin yeah. video. It's the same way with the animals. Yeah. Like I try to put something underneath that coordinates. if it pokes through or exactly, you're not having to work so hard to completely cover exactly completely cover so it. you know we there's the gray core which is good the chunky core the off-white pumpkin 
Um, when I make these darker ones, you can either get the black um, core wool or even the really dark chunky, the dark brown. Okay. Works good for that because it covers it up. Um, in the carding video, I was watching a lot of the videos last night trying to reference what we've done before because this will really bring in a lot of different things. So if you watch the carding video, we were talking about using the hand carders. Um, this is half here, I got the other half right here, to make different color bets. So, you know, I was, I love magenta, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I grabbed the bat that I had made last year, which is the berry sampler mm -hmm. pack, and we just carded it up and made, so pretty. you know, just different colors. So you're not limited to just these bats, you know, go crazy, get some top coat and uh, see what I mean. <laughs> you, you need everything. You really okay. do. <laughs> Let's, okay. So the pumpkin bats, mm -hmm. um, gray would go great with the blue moon, off-white chunky core, and the pumpkin chunky core. Yeah. And then the, the reason we made the vine is because it coordinates with all of these colors. Mm -hmm. It actually pretty much goes with any. It goes, yeah. But what um, Marsha's saying is, you know, these have um, some colors that she carded, um, walnut, was it red redwood? Yeah, I use. Um, I love the redwood. Yeah, and then uh, the natural black. I grabbed some of the merinos. These are just from in the back. Um, and so with the merino, so I'll get this is the brown, and then there's a darker brown, um, the green and the copper kind of color, because you know I I like to see a little bit of That'd flash really of color pretty. in there, yeah, really um, and I don't have the really dark merino that I use as well, but that um, is usually what I put in there. And then we have the four color families of the locks dyed specifically for the pumpkins and for fall, yeah. although they're beautiful and you could use them for anything. So you can find those on the website mm -hmm. under the specialty locks. And I even wrote them down. So we have the Twilight Tendril, because I can't remember everything. Twilight Tendril, which is this kind of mm -hmm. um, darker um, blues, purples. And yeah, it has some silvery tones, mm -hmm. so it's, it's mm -hmm. really pretty. And then we have the pumpkin patch. Which I did. The pumpkin patch is really cool because it has a lot of different it colors. Has a lot so of you, the blues and the oh, you busted the, them all yeah, they're them. like all in. They're all over the place. The pumpkin patch. This one is the um, harvest. I or think the, the squash blossom. Yeah, is that one. And then we have divine, which um, Sassy came up with. That's Sarah um, in the back, which is the purple based one. It's very similar to Twilight, but the divine is more purple based, um, yes. whereas the Twilight has more blues and. And the gray tones in it, so it's more like that star yeah. at time kind of quality. I think we have pretty good representational photos, mm -hmm. um, although every batch is a little bit different. Um, but you can find them on the website. And you know, mixing and mixing and trying new things—it's just it's endless possibilities. So we're going to show. Are you ready to show some techniques? Yes, um, I am. And the base is going to be the regular pump from the pumpkin video. Okay. You go in and you use your core wool and you wrap it and you make, you know, you do your twine around it, make the six segmented. I like the six okay. segmented. Okay. Yeah, I made pumpkin. a couple that have like a lot. Um, so that's yeah. always a possibility. And then also before we go, oh, yeah. real quick, I want to show off of the tipper topper, topper video, mm -hmm. which is the um, basically the bottle uh, wine topper tutorial. Marcia made these, even this one is a, um, has the it's whole a bottle thing. topper. So um, you can work from the pumpkin or from the tipple topper and then take what we're about to show you, with this, which is a few more techniques, and put it all together. Yes. Okay. So I'm super excited about needle felting today. I don't know why. I'm just like super charged. But probably because it's so, it's so real, you know? Like it's just so... I don't know. Tactile. Uh, tactile, I guess is the word. And because we made this great pumpkin video and supply pack, and now we have all these new layers to add to it. And so you could just keep learning, keep building, oh keep gosh. changing things. Um, I'm using a uh, 32 gauge tacky wrap stick, or you could take a wire and use the um, tacky wrap sticky bun um, to make it sticky. But so this has the tacky wrap on it. And I'm going to wrap it with, this is the olive, I wanted to dry the <laughs> olive. Um, so I'm just going to do a really thin piece. And I like to start in the middle and work to each end. It's just easier to control the wire. And I'm going to make this super skinny tendril. And this wool will just stick right to the wire because, um, because it's sticky. 
So I'll work on this, and Marsha is going to show you what, um, what she wants to show you next. That's awesome. Okay, so um, if you've already watched the pumpkin video, which we recommend you do, this is the base pumpkin. So you take, it was the measurement of your arm to your nose, and then a half, and you get a pumpkin that's about this size. And um, you wrap it with whatever you have. Um, We're using yarn, yarn I think, mm -hmm. right? So you make your pumpkin, and then you're going to cover it with whatever finishing top coat that you want. So if you're going to use one of the pumpkin bats, I'm going to use the full moon today um, to show you how to make this. And then I'm going to go in and show you how to make this stem um, with the vine. So mm -hmm. the technique that I'm using for covering this, I was originally just going for it with my pink pen tool mm -hmm. but um i figured out if you use your punch tool mm -hmm. it comes out really smooth and nice and mm -hmm. you don't you don't see things so i'm going to pull a little bit off the vine bat and this is you can see the lobes are not even and i've got the knot up at the top so i really want to keep that at the top because that's going to hide under the stem and this part here i'm going to take and kind of measure over and see how wide I'm gonna need it to cover that. I don't really need all of this. I'm gonna pull some extra off and set it aside because I have smaller areas. And I'm measuring to see it covers the top and the bottom to the center points. And then at the bottom, what I'm going to do, and this is just the way that I work, I'm using my pink pen tool and I'm tacking the end of this little section down. And then with these little, it's really fun, the little belly button part, mm -hmm. just kind of swirl it and boop, boop. Mm -hmm. Pop it together. I like to make noises when I work. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so then you see here, oh, look, it has a beard. No, it's going to just flip up. And um, the way that I like to do this is um, just making sure it was unlocked. Just start in the middle and kind of work your way up this lobe and get to the side. And what this is going to do is give it a nice, smooth finish. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, absolutely. When you get to the end of your wire, go as close as you can to the end. Just fold that little tip over and then keep wrapping. And that will give you a nice finished, not pokey end. I like when plants have little bulbousy things yeah. at the ends. It's really, it adds some good texture to it. So at, here, at the top of this, I'm just gonna take Remember, this is the side that the stem is going to be under, so I'm just going to poke it through here. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, you can either, because you know you have six segments to do here, you can either go through and kind of tap the edges and define that side mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or you could get them all on. And or you can do. get them on. Uh, that would be helpful to see it. Yeah, I, I like I like being able to see it. And you can go back later and define it a little bit more. Right. So then that, you know, and I don't flip around. Like, I'm not going to go over here and do this. I just tend to go right from around. segment to segment. Yeah. So, and you'll be able to eyeball, you know, how much as you're pulling it off, how much you're really going to need. And because these bats have other, like, there's, can you see that tiny bit of green in there? Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of tan, you know, depending on how you're putting it on there you're gonna be able to see that. Yeah, that's why those bats are so cool. They're really, they've got so much dimension. Blues. Yeah, it's not just one color. Mm -hmm. So again, pull it down, kind of double check yourself. So if you don't use yarn, or you're doing the bottle topper, mm -hmm. That's when you're doing the Zuli tool segments. Yes. Okay, so we're going to show that in one second. Okay. And you can hear, actually, I use, um, this is called nettle. It's, you oh, know, okay. plant fiber. Like, a, like it's almost, almost like, like a, a jute. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's what I had at home, and that's what I ended up using. Yeah, you could use embroidery you use, thread. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be yarn, especially if you're. it's not part of your design. You just want to make sure it's strong enough so mm -hmm. that when you're pulling, it actually stays together. Mm -hmm. So there's the second segment. And I'll keep going all the way around, you know, this whole way. And then you're going to end up with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fast forward. There you go. Boom. Okay. 
So that way yeah, you don't have to definitely show the. Um... So at the bottom, um, this is the top here, and this is the bottom. Remember how I was taking those extra fibers and kind of making a swirl? If you do that the entire time, you almost make that little belly button just right there, and it naturally has mm -hmm. a spiral. And the top, you're going to cover this up. So. So now you're going to show so, the, um, this kind of stem? Yeah, so now I'll show this kind of stem. And um, it's just one of those things that as I was making something, I was doing a taco, probably a gnome hat, mm -hmm. and um, I was curling it just to see some of the different things that you could do. And I just kind of happened across this really kind of as a mess up. And I was like, ooh, what if you actually you know, kept doing it? I'm gonna steal your pumpkin and put you my can totally tendril on it. I got plenty of pumpkins. <laughs> um, there, I know, right? No shortage. I know. So I'm gonna try this just using this whole thing and just wrap it around. I'll make these curly on the Zuli tool, and then you can we can show after you do this, mm -hmm. we can show how to put the locks, and the locks will like hold it. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that's gonna, that's so neat. So um, I just grabbed the end of the bat. I mean, they're pretty wide, but um, I just grab it like this so that's about what my it's a little wider than my hand but you're going to get a spiral so you want it the wider you make it the taller it's going to be oh my god that is so cute <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome and that's what the the round end of the zoli tool mm -hmm. oh, that's so sweet and you can use the taper to get it a little tighter as it gets towards the tip of the of the tendril that is so awesome and you can like bend them all over yeah wow this is so cool so what i'm going to do is with the taco shape so you lay all the fibers going down that's a little about four and a half five inches i'm going to center you a little bit more while okay. you do this um and is that good right there we're going to just tack this down here and roll this edge the cross piece stabilizes this shape. If you didn't have that in there, um, it wouldn't have um, the stability of the two. It would want to pull, it to pull apart. Right, and also, um, when you look at the spiral, mm -hmm. this edge here is yeah. this edge. Yeah. So you really, you so know. So that's what that is. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, it needs to be, um, it needs to be defined. Defined, exactly. So, you know, you can kind of go back if you want and hit it with your pen tool a little bit more. Um, that one's going to be nice and fluffy. Now, what I've learned as I've been doing this is I like, if I were going to embed um, pipe cleaner or the wire in it, this is where you would do it because you're going to make this part, this is the tip here. Okay. And you want to envision the wire would go down like this. So this is where you're going to okay. roll the stem. So your wire would come down. And then this would keep rolling at an angle down Correct. the so wire. Correct. So that would wrap around the wire. Okay. So the wire is not in this top part. It goes down here. I got you. So um, what I like to do is finish this tip just a little bit. This is going to be the tip here. Do we want to do that? Because... It's, yeah. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Too. What kind of wire do you want? Um, I just use... I like using... Um, the pipe cleaner with it because okay. it's fuzzy enough. Okay. So um, we will. I will go ahead and just show the one without it, and then we'll also do the one with it. Too. Here, let's just do it with it. With because, it. Yeah, because it's it's the same process without it, right? It just yeah. doesn't have it in there. So um, when you're doing this, depending on how you're going to attach it, if I were doing the regular pumpkin. Um, you would want it to be just as long as this pumpkin because you know your pumpkin's already established so that it would basically sit to the top of this and then it would bend. Um, so I'm gonna use this and just cut this piece. Well, you know, I can cut it later okay. if I want. So I'm gonna fold it in half because I like having um, that bent over. You can also just fold the tip. Um, but this way, you're just gonna take this in here mm -hmm. and tuck it really nice get that tucked down in there avoiding hitting the pipe cleaner mm -hmm. so if you didn't have wire it's the same fold it's the same just fold. there's no wire in there right exactly so then you're basically taking this and just wrapping it with this sort of 45 degree angle mm -hmm. to the to the wire and you can you know you can make it gosh you know the spiral itself it can be really elongated mm -hmm. you can make it very short 
they don't really look much like much at this point. Right. I'm just going to tack that just gently there. And the way that I work, I work from the top to the bottom. And um, as I'm working, so you got to remember that pipe cleaner is in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, if you notice the angle that I'm stabbing, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not stabbing up yeah, and down. It I'm, accentuates this, mm -hmm. that ridge. So really what I'm doing is in my brain when I'm picturing this, I'm picturing this inch, not touch, or that, it's probably like a quarter of an inch, that part of it that I'm not going to really touch because, you know, when I did the taco shape. So you're concentrating on the, um, the bottom of each spiral. Mm -hmm. like. And this is just to define the spiral part right now. Right. And you can see it's starting, I just tacked it down because yeah. I, I might want to, you know, pull it up and tighten it a little bit I more see. again. Yeah. So, it, but that little tacky just helps you get... So you Start follow it. the spiral down. So you fire, follow it down, correct. At the angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a very uh, tense filter. <laughs> Man, some of my early pumpkins were like tennis balls. They were really tight. Um, you know, oh, that's funny. and uh, yeah, so my son had fun drawing them at my daughter. It was awesome. <laughs> Catch, Chloe. You could like give them to pit bulls and they would be able yeah, to just arr, 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 chew on it. Yeah, they really, um, it was funny because, you know, it's, I had gotten a bunch of fake snowballs uh, for my kids one time. I think it was for their birthday. They both have December birthdays. And um, we were, you know, of course, having snowball fights in the house with these things. And so they saw the pumpkins, and it's a similar size, and they just took to it. So um, as you're going, then you kind of go back in and redefine again. And you can hold it and twist it and work your way up, mm -hmm. always avoiding that... Um, wire that's in there. Now, mm -hmm. I'm still working at the same angle. I've just turned the stem a bit. Mm -hmm. And so, once again, kind of going down. And what this is doing now is you can, if you want, um, go at the angle right where the spiral is mm -hmm. and attach that a bit more if you wanted. Um, poke down. Flatter, like if mm -hmm. you wanted a flatter look. Like you're really defining, like it doesn't have to have this flare. It could be even be a little tighter, closer. If exactly. You, want it to. you can, yeah. And this is, um, actually, <laughs> I feel like Martha Stewart, like <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Tell me about your. Oh my gosh, have you <laughs> seen the new? Uh, for the new season, they did. Um, was it like uh, the movie Ghost with the pottery? No. And Martha's throwing. It's actually a cake, and Snoop comes in behind oh her, and he's all. It is the funniest. No. Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> awesome. Those so two are, they're fabulous. Um, so really, I mean, you yeah. know, the definition that you're going to get, you can work on this and work on this. I would suggest making a few of them because it's not like you're never going to use them because right. as you're making more pumpkins, like give this a try. <laughs> if you're Marcia, make, make 50. <laughs> um, while you're doing that, can I show this sheet? Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So we're, we're making these um, basic, just simple Zuli tool shapes. We do this for animals and all kinds of things. And I've got off-white chunky core in a quarters. And these pieces are about 18 inches long. And of course, this is gonna depend on the size of the pumpkin that you're making. But on the flat end of the Zuli tool, I'm going about three inches up and then turning around and going back. And the more you can go up and back and keep your fiber nice and flat and even, the better structure your shape's going to have. Oh, dogs are getting ready to bark. Get ready. <laughs> so once um, you have gone out and back at least three times, when you slide this off the Zuli tool, it... First of all, it naturally has a bend just because of the way that you wrap. This comes in handy when we do the sleepy, like the sleepy mice and everything. And then it also naturally has tapered ends. So if you're doing a pumpkin with tons of segments or it's a bottle topper or for some reason you're not using yarn or you did the yarn and you feel like it doesn't even have enough definition, then you're going to take these and they're going to become your segments. So you're going to tack the point down. <laughs> All right, so you're going to tack the one end down and then bring it around and tack the other end down. And then just keep doing that all the way around. If you want tons of skinny segments, use 
the round end of the Zulu tool. Mm. It'll do the same thing. But if you want fatter segments, um, and then you're just gonna keep keep going. Well, that'll give you a really good definition in between. Yeah. Huge, huge cracks. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, really quick too, with this stem, as you're getting to the bottom, what you wanna remember is you're gonna have, a, you need it to, you can't just stop here. You need to fill a little bit below as well. So you don't just stop at that bottom, the top, the top of the bottom spiral. You know, you just have to keep going all the way around until you kind of give yourself a really nice established base. So if you didn't have a wire, you would just, at this point, <laughs> Finley's taking so out our Finley's legs. just like walking around with his nails on the hardwood. So, um, you know, if you wanted to um, do it with a wire, and this will make your, your stem flexible, um, you could, if you didn't want the wire, that's fine. If you have the wire, you're gonna need to cut it. Because this is gonna be at the base where it's gonna meet the pumpkin. So I just split this in half, which is, you know, um, in the pumpkin video, Lee talks about making the, uh, the, the star here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that um, the same kind of way. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Couldn't right. you put, to help hold it on, have that be in part of the star? Or is it too much um, of a pain to felt onto? You could try it. All right. Well, I just I'm just watching you and thinking. <laughs> um, about that. Well, when I'm actually, if I'm making like these, um, these actually have the the wire in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did because I did the tipple topper for this, I had the cone, and with that, I did split the wire and I uh -huh. put it underneath of the segments. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So that so way, it's them first, actually. Exactly. Okay. So it's it's under it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with this, it's just going to be something that I mean that you might. You might be able to, if you did this with that wire, the tacky wrap wire, uh -huh. you could make little tiny tendrils with the, ah, right? See? So you could do something. Oh, we got to start okay. over. So, <laughs> no, it's just, this is, this is the fun stuff that happens, yeah. right? Okay, so, so um, use, use, so oh, I'm actually going to wrap real quick. I'm going to wrap these while you're. So what she's saying is, yeah. if you use the, like the 26 gauge maybe, or the 32, but you put I'm just afraid the 32 might not be strong enough right. to actually post. So I would probably stem. do the 26. The 26. And then um, leave it long, make your stem, and then these become the tendrils sticking out of the stem. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, with this being a pipe cleaner, I'm going to do the technique where you get a little bit on the edge, okay. then you flip it over and you... Oh, so you are going to leave them long this time. I'm going to leave them long. Just, just try because. It. Just yeah, try it. why not? So, but before you were cutting them off and then just felting stem on as you did. Exactly. Okay. Um, but now that I've seen your really cool wire work over there, <laughs> I'm thinking... Knees, you can even just get that all poked up like this. Although I'm using the stem color, which, you know, I probably should have used something else to add a little bit of contrast. But um, it's all good. Mm -hmm. And the curls are going to cover the base up anyway. Yeah, I'm going to back this one in wonky shape. I just made that was not a good wrap. Look how my mood ring is Serafina blue. Ooh, that's what happens. I wore my Serafina blue colors. Yeah. Well, at least this side anyway. I'm really curious. That's going to be pretty. Okay, so I've wrapped these two. <laughs> it's like, it's going to be a funny little It's going to be like a little alien guy here. Um, so we had split this in half before and then you're gonna if I have six segments on here so I'm gonna do the three on each side and I'm not gonna curl the uh, little viney tendrils until after because I'm just gonna have to put them out of the way um, when you have your six little fluffs here 
you kind of want to look at your segments and see if there's anything small. I usually have one really small one. This one's pretty good, so I'm just going to put that on there and line them up. Now, keeping in mind that you have that wire in there, you know, you're going to make sure. This is why the knot um, being under there is good because you can just hide it. You don't have to worry about really poking into it because you're poking here around the sides. You could, like, make a leaf and make that wire the stem of the leaf oh. with pre-felt. Ooh, there's <laughs> so many. You could even do wet felting and have some of the curls, like the textures, yeah. like even, you know, fluff them out and really. It would be cool to make a really, like a big pumpkin and go like all elaborate with yeah. the big, leaves big and the um, curly cues and the stem and the, right? <laughs> you could do so many things. So. In general, I usually just take it down because um, when I made the taco, I didn't have a lot of fiber. If you pulled more, you could have a lot more, um, and you can do fun things like this. Even if you don't have a really long taco, you, could add you can add little, you can draft it out, um, pulling it and making extra ones. So in the way, I'm going to see, this one's a little bit longer. Let's see if I can make just a little spiral, just a, maybe not a spiral, but just a little wave even. And you're basically drawing with your pen tool. And then you're kind of going to go back. I like to say pumpkin. Pumpkin, pumpkin, chunkin. <laughs> I like pumpkin pie. Didn't pumpkin chunkin get canceled? I think I think there have been some um, accidents that... I mean, something's like going to go wrong with homemade catapults and, <laughs> and gourds. And... Oh, and they have different categories, too, so it's like they're really... Man, I, I always wanted to see it, though. Although, I can... We get those tiny gourds, and at the end of the season, my son just chucks them. You have them. your own pumpkin We just do our own little pumpkin chunkin', gourd chunkin'. Although, you know, my house, it's all... It's a free-for-all sometimes. It's fun. Mm. So... You can make just little designs, and if you did, if you had this intent in mind, like do it with intention of adding on so that you could go and add more spirals. You know, think about your overall design when you're doing stuff like this. This little pumpkin I was talking about making um, shapes on the Zuli tool, this one has like tons, and I um, I did use the round end of the Zuli oh, tool. Oh, nice, and then I also like dented it in the center of each one too which is and how did you what's this other is that just a piece of um is that the wool or is it maybe a that's color wool that's wool okay yeah but i accentuated that with nice i think this was part of my um heron my blue heron all right what else do we need to do let's see we talked about the one and the stems, kind of fiddling with designs. Zoli tool segments. I think that's everything. I think yeah. I think we're up. Oh, oh we're gonna put some curls on. Yeah. How do you do it? You just stab. I them just in go there. for it. I just you stab just them like, in there, and there's really no. Um, all right. So, let's see. That's what I do too, really. Instead of like folding or anything, I just take the end and try to get it. Anchored. And then sometimes I put a little bit of stem color back on top of it. Like if it... If you need to... Depending yeah. on what the locks what are. The locks well, are. and um, what I like about these newer locks that we've made, um, we're making them out of border luster. So mm -hmm. they've got that nice... Like the base is nice and fibrous. You know, mm -hmm. they could be very yeah. fuzzy. So they but really... the tip is still... The tip is really nice and defined. So, um, so I'm going to put... Two, two locks here, and um, I'm going to put the ends right on top of where these wires cross, and then I'm going to put a little bit of stem color. So all of that is going to really hold everything in place. And just like, going to hold the locks in place, and it's going to hold the stem. When you're pulling the locks apart, um, you had mentioned in the pumpkin video, too, that you, know, you hold the tip with the border luster. You hold where if you find the tip, you'll see there's, you know, some of these locks kind of break apart naturally here, and you pull it from the tip. You want to keep that intact so you can sit and... So now that's not going anywhere, you know? So 
so cool. Fun little pumpkins. So we hope you guys, um, you know, run wild with this and just like we figured out a few things just as we were sitting here stabbing and talking and sharing, um, you're going to figure stuff out too. And if you do, let us know. You can, um, you can find us on Facebook at Serafina Fiber Art is our business page. Or you can join our group if you haven't already, which is Serafina Felting Fanfare. And we've got um, thousands of members, but it still has a very small community feel because we keep it, you know, we, we, we stay on task and just share. We're just sharing, basically mm -hmm. sharing felting. And um, so let us know if you do discover something using these materials and techniques, um, let us know there so we can all jump on the bandwagon. Nice. Thanks, Marsha. Thank you, sir. <laughs>